Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back. I hope you're well. So, um, we are doing some really cool stuff over at the Amethyst Ascension Group on Facebook. Um, I believe now it's called Divination Spirituality. I really recommend joining this group if you haven't, and also if you haven't, join mine on Facebook. The links will both be down in the description. But she had an idea of trying to get the community together to do some past life work this month. And I think it is amazing. And it can really be beneficial to us spiritually. And that is what we're going to talk about. Um, I've been going through some things, okay? A lot of you may know, um, which a lot of you may not know, because I've been kind of private off to myself but a lot has happened in the last like year and a half um Chris and I were no longer together um and I had met someone else and we've been together for a little over a year now um this man was so unexpected but also expected spiritually we're gonna get into that and um why that's so prominent in my spiritual practice right now and in this past life work um it was one of them things where i'm in that phase where i know it's important right now this relationship for my spiritual advancement but i don't know why um i know it's deep very personal and um, uh, very impactful. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember, Rochelle and I at Amethyst Ascension were doing this live about like, have you been visited by like this dark magician type of figure in your dreams? And this dark magician figure um, that we had both encountered, very alluring, very seductive. With mine, I couldn't always really see his face, but I knew his body, I knew his voice, and I really knew his energy. And there was one point when he first entered my dream, I was in Ireland still, and uh, The dream really upset me. It disturbed me to my core because there was something about this man's energy that was so seductive, but not in only a sexual way, if that makes sense. I was seduced in every way, intellectually, um, spiritually. There was definitely a connection there. And in this dream... I was in the South, funny, because I didn't at the time picture myself um, ending up back here in the South, and uh, this man was in my childhood home with me, and I got a phone call from the person I was with at the time, and he was just crying, devastated, how could you do this to me, how could you do this to me, and I, um, I didn't care in the dream. I was just like, you know, it's, it's over. It's been over. And I'm with this person. Pause a moment because I feel a little awkward just because this is personal. Um, it might be a little bit of tea for you guys, but, uh, just keep in mind, please. It's, it's really personal for me, but it's important because, I want to share it. I want to show you guys how powerful like past life work in this work can be. Anyway, I w woke up from that dream and I told my partner at the time about it, but I was just really disturbed because I was like, at the time I couldn't imagine it ever being bad or me being with anybody else. Well, fast forward to around the time you guys know I lost like almost everyone in my family back to back and that kind of was uh, triggering my life to lead to the path back to the states and to the south 
when my dad was passing. So I had a dream that, uh, again, it was a large um, build with this man, dark hair. I couldn't see his face again, but I knew that energy. It was the same one from that one dream I had explained a moment ago. And he was saying, I'm in America and I'm waiting for you. I'll be here. You know, when I woke up, I had the feeling of fear, but not fear as in like, not fear as in I didn't want it. It was a fear because I did want it. Um, and I felt guilty. But I was like, oh my gosh, like, and it was because of the, uh, the energy, the connection I felt, you know, it was very deep, almost like I've known this energy forever. I, I have to be with it. It's, it will complete me, um, at a soul core level. But again, thought nothing of it. I did have one more dream. That one's a bit too personal kind of too personal to share here but it also was of this man when I got here things were not all that great you know a lot of things happened and um my ex and I decided to go our separate ways I ended up starting the job as in this was just a very low point in my life um, that's around the time I took a big break from here, which I'm sorry about. I'm sorry I didn't really give you guys an update, but a lot was going on, okay? I wasn't okay mentally. Just life, I had to get on my feet. I had to do something, you know? So I took the first job I could get, and it ended up turning out pretty good for me besides um, some other things that happened and contributed to just a mental decline even worse. Um, we won't get into that, but just know um, an event happened that was even more heartbreaking in that time of my life that I needed a large break from, though it is relevant to this as well, um, this relationship. Because what happened to me, I probably couldn't have got over without my partner that I'm with now. His name is Lucas, by the way. Which, how interesting is it that Lucas is uh, derived from Lightbringer or Lucifer? <laughs> anyway, um, so when I had met him, we both worked in the same area at my job and... Again, I felt like there was something there. That energy was familiar, and I was very attracted to this person, but it also aggravated me. You know, I was like, no, nah, you know, I'm going to be single for a bit. I'm, no. Like, why am I, why am I doing this? It's annoying. <laughs> but we ended up becoming great friends, and um, one thing led to another. As we went along in our relationship, I started noticing all of our synchronicities, um, also working together spiritually. I kind of awoke in that in him, um, though he had family members who were practicing. Um, he never did. Um, it's really cool. He kind of has a Romanian background, too. Um, just different really cool stuff. But he's in divination. I mean, a lot of stuff. Our astrology charts are literally everything perfectly aligned in the same houses same signs I mean it's crazy okay the the synchronicities and uh, where it all led and how it fell into place and that now leads me to here with this past life work this month I wanted to know because I know there is some deep um, work going on here you know you feel it you learn to use that spiritual compass inside you and it guides you on your path right I knew there was something very important to this um, 
and I wanted to know what. We are going to uh, be analyzing that. Why is this relationship important? And we are going to be doing the past life reading for him and me. I don't know if he'll join in the future, maybe, and meeting him. But, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. First, Rochelle over at Amethyst Ascension, thank you so much. You are a doll. But um, she helped me because I do not have the Archetypes deck yet. But, man, am I going to get it because this was so powerful, guys. This, so powerful. Already, I have so much information and answers, and I haven't even gotten into this life yet fully. So today, we're going to talk about what we got for the Archetypes deck, which is pretty much the overall energy to the reading. It adds depth to your past life reading. And then we're going to, I'm going to read you guys the blueprint of this past life. And then next week, we will get deeper into that blueprint and the details of all of it. All right. So, on the screen, I have presented to you the cards that were pulled and um, what both of our roles were. Now, we went into this reading with the question of what past life is significant between he and I for me to know to do the work and know what I'm supposed to be doing in this life. So she pulled a card for each of us for our archetypes in our past life. Keep in mind this is supposed to be helping us do the spiritual work we need to do in this life together. Our archetypes were his as the warrior, which the soldier advocate, the face to face with death type of energy, um, presence, alignment, um, and true to their purpose. And a soldier can be lost, you know, which is interesting because Luke always kind of said before he met me, he was lost. Although I do somewhat feel like the roles may be reversed in this life, with, which is really interesting. I feel like in this life, I took on like that warrior type of energy where he took on mine, which is the mentor. So the teacher, the sage, the one with like cosmic knowledge, overwhelming forceful energy, um, gifts for stimulating growth in others. And they know what kind of serves the soul, but it's important for them to remain humble, right? They're the student always, but also the teacher. Which, if we wanted to advance our spiritual alignment in our soul contract, then it makes sense on why roles would be reversed in this life. Because gosh, does he help me. He is my mentor with a lot of things, whereas I'm always ready for war, a battle, or a fight. Now, for the meeting place, our origins, like where it all began, this is when it got really interesting because I even told you guys that I thought that my last relationship was a twin flame relationship. I am now here to tell you that I think that was wrong, which shocks me. I think... Perhaps it might have been preparing me for it. Which could be why there was a lot of similarities. I don't know. I'm still analyzing that. The reason why... I think I actually found the true one. And I know that's like cliche, right? Because you got everybody these days thinking every relationship is their twin flame. I don't think that. But I do think I was wrong here. And this could possibly be it. This relationship I'm in now. Um, for the meeting place, our very origins where our souls first met, I got the womb. Eternal. The cosmic womb. Right? That um, eternal mother. Um, being reborn in the name of love. That was our origin where our souls met plus with our astrology you know I mean it's 
all paths are leading to it, which again, it really surprised me because even after my previous relationship and I split up there for a while, still fought, you know, but but I also seen in another video that sometimes that can happen. Um, it was somebody else talking about like that twin flame energy and how sometimes a false one can come in before um, to prepare you for the meeting of your actual one. Which I don't know if it's all true guys, but it's interesting. So I thought I'd share it. The next cards we went through was the tools we came into with the life, um, which is like your skills or um, like gifts, ability, you know, just something you came into. For Lucas, he got the ring, which is like an infinite wheel connection. He came into the life already loving me. Bond between two deep soulmates, that eternal love is what it symbolizes. For me, I got the medallion, which is like an amulet or an heirloom, sacred objects, or it could even be like gifts, emotions, or carrying something for someone or the self. Um, it could even be an idea. And this card kind of hones in on um, protecting or honoring a promise or... Uh, maybe needing to let go of something that I've been holding on to as an idea that needs to be readdressed to be let go of in order to progress in other workings and um, perhaps this connection there's something to that in doing that for my spiritual growth in this life we'll see and I want to say before we do the initiation part of this reading Rochelle recently did her video on her channel. I will link that below too, using this deck and explaining these cards in greater depth. So I highly recommend going and watching it. And I also recommend go and watch everybody else doing this work. The different like stories we're getting, the different works that are coming up, they are all really interesting. They're amazing. And if you want to be a part of it, Highly recommend you doing it. So, for the initiation, which is like in that lifetime a major occurrence or event that happened that you were never really the same person after. These are like your heartbreaks or deaths of somebody or just a really major life upheaval that changed you. It transformed you. And sometimes you may not even know who you are anymore after they happen, right? It's kind of that death and rebirth. We got the Apocalypsis card, which is um, removing a veil of deception. And it read somewhere in that book, like two desperate occurrences coming together, which is very relevant for he and I in this life. If... Um, you knew our entire story and the details of it. Some of it's a bit too personal to explain here. But take my word for it, this, it's like we saved each other in a lot of ways. So that really spoke to me. God, I'm getting emotional. See what I mean? Like this past life work, it can be really beneficial. It could be like unearthing truths, regeneration, like we're supposed to take our um, wreckages we both experienced previously and regenerate. Um, and there may even be truths yet to still discover together and work through together. Um, I truly believe he came into my life at the point that he did for my spiritual ascension and growth. And I believe that on the other side or in the ethereal or astral, we knew this. And it's almost like until I came into his life, he was waiting. If you knew his story, you know, it ain't really my story to tell, but it's like he was waiting. 
I think deep down I was still waiting too. I made a lot of bad choices trying to find what I have now. But I don't think I could have appreciated the man that he is if I didn't go through those relationships. So in a way that was spiritual too. That helped me grow too. And now I feel like we got real work to do. Anyway, let's get on to the blueprint now of our life, this past life. Holy hell, you guys. Okay, so I paused the video to actually do, like, the blueprint. Because I hadn't done it yet, okay? I'm bad at time management. <laughs> so the plot thickens. The plot fucking Thickens. All right. When he and I first got together, Rochelle, for fun, actually did like a past life reading for us. This is the exact freaking past life she did. Oh my gods. Like, <laughs> you can't make this shit up. And what's interesting about this, all right. Tone it down. Ah. <sighs> All right, I'm sorry, I'm just so like, I'm just like, wow, blown the frick away. So the one she did was an unrequited love of a life we had during um, the World War era. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry. During the World War One era, and I was a young female in that life, my father didn't want me to be with him, but he went off to war to kind of like prove something to him. That he was like worthy of me and I ended up losing him in the war and um, I opted out and alived myself um, out of the pain of losing him. <laughs> it's the same life not to mention Luke. It's like his uh, one of his grandfathers was in that war and died in that war from um, what it was a really famous thing that happened. Um, it was like the soldiers they got in the shipwreck out there and they drifted for days. Yeah, one of Luke's grandfathers was involved in that. And could he possibly be the incarnation? Um, wow, guys, this is the same life. So. For identity, he got devotee or follower. Mine was young female. Time frame, World War age. Um, location, West civil civilization. Um, faith was sacrificial, which is interesting because I'm like, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll get more into that next week when we learn the details of this. Um, our love unrequited trauma was war for both of us death was war for him and uh, opting out for me lesson for both of us overcoming loss and uh, wow just wow so her getting that life while reading for us for fun because I believe I had similar questions when she did that one for us and this was quite a while ago um there's something definitely important about this life something we carried over and we're supposed to be doing in this life spiritually I feel it and this is confirmation I'm blown away and for those of you interested I am using the um Uncover Your Past Lives Oracle. And the one she used was the Archetypes deck. I'm just so excited. I can't wait for next week, guys. But, yeah, this video is long enough. Thank you so much for watching and um, following along with this. I find it so interesting. Wow. <laughs> okay, well. Starting off with a banger, right? For this week um, on this journey. I'm so happy to be here and share it with you. But okay, let me know what you thought down in the comments. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> Alright guys, till next time.